Hey, and welcome back to the channel. And this is the ROG Ally. It's been about six months since this device has been out in the market. And well, it had a pretty rocky start with lots of you know software issues and bugs. After six months, those issues are pretty much resolved. And spoiler alert, the ROG Ally might just very well be the best gaming handheld that's out in the market right now, especially for the price and its performance. So let's talk about it. But before we get into this review, let's quickly talk about, you know, what's inside the ROG Ally. So inside the ROG Ally is the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor, which is basically a custom AMD Ryzen 7 7840U that can perform at a much lower TDP, which means it's perfect for handhelds. Besides that, the Ally also features 16 gigs of RAM and a stock 512 gigs of storage, which in my opinion is just not enough for PC gaming. And since this is basically a mini PC, I went ahead and upgraded the SSD to a four terabyte PCIe Gen 4 SSD so that I have more space to install and play games on the go. And there's a few tutorials on YouTube on how to do that. Uh, but besides that, it also features a 7-inch 1080p IPS landscape panel that has a variable refresh rate up to 120 hertz, which in my opinion is the perfect size and resolution on a gaming handheld. Oh, and it also has a slot for a micro SD card, but just a fair warning, I don't think the issue of micro SDs getting fried will ever get fixed until there's a proper redesign. So if I were you, I would just upgrade your SSD to two terabytes or four terabytes, which in the long run will be far better if you plan on not only playing games off of your Steam library, but if you plan on doing, you know, emulation gaming. Now, in terms of its design, it only comes in this one color. It's this nice flat white color with some RGB lighting on the analog sticks. The face buttons are pretty good and one of the best in the mainstream market, in my opinion. They click down very nicely and the D-pad is pretty good for fighting games like Street Fighter. Uh, I wish the analog sticks were Hall Effect joysticks like the Legion Go so that there's little to no stick drift in the future. But I've actually seen someone mod their ROG Ally to install Hall Effect joysticks. And hopefully the next version of the Ally comes with Hall Effect joysticks out of the box. Now in terms of comfortability, it's one of my favorite handhelds to pick up. I think size wise, uh, it's pretty standard. It's not overly bulky and the weight isn't really an issue. So gaming on the go is perfect, but I do wish that it had, you know, some sort of kickstand so that I can just put it on the desk and play it like this. So with all the basics out of the way, how does it game and perform on a daily basis? Now to give you guys a little bit of context, I've been using the ROG Ally alongside the Legion Go and the GPD Win4, which are both amazing gaming handhelds in their own right. But honestly, I think the Ally is one of the most polished and reliable gaming handhelds out right now. I know that their software wasn't the best and there were a few bugs when this first came out, but man, Asus and the ROG team really did a good job at pushing out software updates uh, to its Armory Crate software where it made the overall experience feel so much better to use on a daily basis. I love that they keep adding more features like the gyro support, which is pretty cool for racing games or uh, casual FPS games, uh, giving us 900p options so that we have an option to play at a slightly lower resolution than 1080p when playing games. Uh, but they also made it super easy to update the BIOS too. All of it is done through the Armory Crate software, so you don't actually have to you know, download the BIOS update manually, run it, and mess with a bunch of settings. It's pretty much a one-click update experience, which I love. But overall, from what I've seen, they seem to really listen to their customers' feedback and push out updates on a fairly consistent basis, and that's a really good sign. Now, when it comes to gaming, it can handle pretty much all the games that I have on my Steam library and Xbox Game Pass. I don't really play a ton of games that are low TDP type of games like, you know, Cuphead or Stardew Valley. But what I do play are games like GTA 5, Red Dead 2, Madden 23, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2, Street Fighter 6, and Forza Horizon 5. And every single game that I played, played smooth like butter. I think one thing I'll say about gaming on a handheld, especially in 2023, going to 2024, is to set your expectations on what the graphics are gonna look like. This isn't a $4,000 gaming PC, so don't expect to play games at 1080p, ultra quality at 120 frames per second. This is a $600 to $700 gaming handheld with an iGPU that is probably comparable to a GTX 
1050 Ti uh, graphics card. So if you want constant 60 frames per second gameplay, expect to play in 720p medium to high settings or 1080p low to medium settings. Now I typically play on a 15 watt to 25 watt TDP and sometimes at 30 watts when I'm plugged in, but when I'm playing in that 15 to 25 watt TDP, I'm almost always playing this handheld and unplugged. And with everything set to 1080p low to medium settings, games like GTA 5 runs great. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2 plays great. Street Fighter 6 is awesome on this too. And I believe all three of them are almost always running at 60 frames per second. Now, Red Dead 2, I prefer to run at 25 watts or 30 watts and turn on FSR to performance mode to get closer to 60 frames per second constant. Otherwise, there's some occasional dips in frame rates if I'm playing at that 15 watt TDP. Now, do keep in mind the battery on the ROG Ally isn't the biggest. It has a 40 watt hour battery and it's most likely going to run out of battery in about an hour max if you're playing the games that I'm playing. Now, if I'm not on a long haul flight, what I like to actually do is plug in the ROG Ally using a dock and use channel sponsor MSI's MP161 15.6 inch portable monitor and connect their gaming wireless controller on the Ally so I can play games on a bigger display at 60 frames per second constant at 1080p. And with a proper dock, this also gives me the ability to play plugged in and run the Ally at 30 watts TDP, which gives me way better performance. Now, what I love about this portable monitor is that it has a built-in kickstand that allows me to play at almost any angle. And probably the best part is that it powers on by plugging in your device to one of the two USB-C ports and it just powers up. It has no external power break or anything like that. It's literally plug and play on the Ally and that's what I love about this. It's truly a portable monitor and that's it. It has a super slim profile as you can see. And if you're traveling on a go, this isn't really gonna take up much space in your backpack and it comes with a soft carrying case too. I think if you're in a pretty small space or you just you know travel often and you need a portable monitor at your hotel and you just want a bigger display, not just for gaming, but for productivity too, I'd highly recommend picking up the MSI MP161 portable monitor. And you can pick one up for yourself using the first link down below. And huge shout out to MSI for sponsoring a portion of this video. So with all that being said, is the ROG Ally worth it six months later? For me, I absolutely think so. Even though it's not a perfect handheld, I think if you're looking into PC gaming on the go, I think the ROG Ally is one of the gaming handhelds for nearly everyone. The software experience is the best that I've seen on a Windows-based gaming handheld, and it'll only get better from here with the ROG team almost always providing software updates to the Ally. Now, I do have a review of the Lenovo Legion Go on the channel, so if you want to watch that, I'll make sure to leave that link down below as well. I think the Legion Go is good in certain aspects of gaming and has its own set of unique features. But as a handheld, the Ally with its more compact body, lighter weight and software just makes it the perfect handheld in my opinion. If only the battery was slightly bigger and it had Hall Effect joysticks, I would have touted the Ally to be the perfect handheld. But as we all know, nothing is ever perfect. But man, it's hard not to recommend the Ally, especially when it's almost always on sale for $600 or less. I think at that price, it's a steal and it's a great entry into handheld gaming. Thank you.